nozzle testing for the barbecue uh, extruder here. Um, this is going to be a fast video because I think a uh, 3D food printer belongs in the kitchen. Order. And so we've got it in the kitchen today. Uh, my wife is at her work Christmas party, so we're just going to be real Chanel and fast and uh, get this in and out. Uh, I've had a little bit of complications getting everything set up, but uh, I'm crossing my fingers that everything's going to go well. A uh, couple words of note real quick, uh, the BBQ extruder was uh, released as open source. You can find everything about it at BBQ.org. I really appreciate all the support from everybody who's shown. Uh, I was really flattered to see uh, Rich Rap, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pekka and uh, Dizenhoff and just so many other people, sorry if I didn't name you, who uh, showed some love to the Poppy Q. You know, it's kind of a, a fun approach to uh, 3D printing and uh, it's just a blast doing it and, uh, you know, I hope somebody can learn something or, you know, can, can uh, feed off the vibe I'm giving out on it. Um, it's just a lot of fun, so thank you everybody for your support and uh, please keep following and uh, let me know, you know, what improvements maybe could be made or how maybe it would do something differently. Um, the parametric version is still in the works. Uh, there's still some adjustments that need to be made to the design. Um, so just, just follow along, I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, I'm not an engineer, you know. But, uh, you know, I'm doing my best, so any critiques, please uh, send them over, so uh, it'll only help me. So, two big thank yous uh, as well. Uh, I want to give a shout out and thank you to 3digitalcooks.com, uh, also at 3digitalcooks. It's uh, Mr. Luis Rodriguez, and uh, he is doing some crazy stuff, amazing stuff. He's the one that did the pancakes. Uh, and he also experimented recently with salt and ketchup and uh, uh, also with uh, some jelly. So go ahead and follow him, check him out and uh, check out the site. He's got so much cool stuff. He did an interview also with uh, the TNO, uh, um, I guess, engineer, uh, Kelvin Bommel. And, uh, and that was an awesome, awesome interview. TNO is doing some, some really cool stuff. They're the ones that make those little uh, bites the square food bites that you see all over the internet when you Google 3D food printing. And a big shout out to my man, man Flor Florian Hirsch and his new book, uh, Try to Drink for All of the Do It Yourself Guide. This book is, is so awesome, and uh, you can see there's a, a cameo from the BBQ in there. And uh, I, I've been going through it left and right, and I, I've been learning so much. and. Uh, it, but it's written so well that anybody anybody can pick it up and learn and uh, you know even the, the so-called experts and everything I mean there's something in here for everybody go ahead and check that out on the uh, Hypecask H-Y-P-E-C-A-S-K dot com and they got the book there you can also follow Florian at at Flush F-L-O-U-S-H it's on Amazon it's on Amazon as well if you want to check it out there. It's, it's, uh, it's, just, it's just awesome. It works so hard and it's, it's well worth it. And I definitely recommend it. So on to today's agenda. So what we're going to do is we're going to try, attempt to print three different burger designs. I've got an open source hardware logo that I'm going to attempt to print. Uh, a uh, RepRap logo that uh, I'm, I'm hoping works out. And then uh, I'm also going to try something we're going to see how it works at uh, R2-D2. So we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm really crossing my fingers that everything goes well today. I haven't tried anything. All I've done is load it up. So this is happening, you know, live as you see it. You know, this is, this is going to go down or it's not. Um, it takes a lot of pressure. This nozzle here is actually seven and a half millimeters. Um, I had to print this piece because we lost it and I can't find it at all. Um, so I had to print this last night. This nozzle here is just your standard Wilton uh, nozzle. I think it's number 12. It's uh, seven and a half millimeters. I, I, uh, I tried manually with my hands the three millimeter nozzle and it was, it's just crazy hard to push no matter how much oil and whatever else you put inside the meat. Um, today we're going to be extruding uh, just straight rimmed beef. 
Um, it's pretty lean, so I kind of tried to grease it up with some extra oil. Um, and yeah, there's about three, uh, just under 300 grams inside the uh, hamburger housing. So it's, it's going to be fun, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, so uh, let's get started. The first test we're going to do today is the uh, open source hardware logo. So if, we, if, we, if, if, if it works, then we're going to try all three. So bear with me just one moment. Oh, well. So the string is, is super tight. You can see it's just it doesn't look like the, the gears are moving but it's So it's pushing it. Maybe it's just, see it's not so tight now. The motor's not hot. Nothing's hot. Okay, we got some movement now. All right. Maybe it was just too too close to the bed. Or maybe there's just thick chunks in there that So I think, yeah, those strings are really tight, and it's, <sighs> so 
So, I think I can try to solve some of this by uh, maybe opening up the nozzle size to give, maybe that'll give some addition, opening up the nozzle size in the slicing settings to, uh, maybe that'll give it some additional strength, but um, it's, it's really tough to press this stuff out of that extruder at, at such a small um, diameter with the nozzle. It's thick, it's, it's, uh, it's lean beef. Maybe I should try just fattier beef next time. Um, let me play with the settings uh, real quick and we'll, we'll try the next one. We'll try the uh, rep wrap bug. Now we're gonna go for the rep wrap bug. I've adjusted some settings. I've, uh, I've changed the uh, nozzle diameter to nine uh, millimeters. And I changed the fill density to 50%. I don't know if that's gonna have anything, but we'll see. I changed the layer height to five uh, millimeters as well. It looks about right. You see, it's the meat. There's these. There's like some parts are. Are just hard, I guess. Maybe I just need that little bit of, you know, more pressure. I mean, it's okay with a larger nozzle, you know. Uh, so there we've got the uh, open source logo burger. Yeah, I know. We got a long, a lot of room for improvement there. Just got a uh, knock on the door from the neighbors, uh, as well as uh, my wife will be coming home soon. And it's gonna take me a little bit of time to clean this up. We'll shoot for the R two D two next time, huh? Um, I'll search for some possible bigger nozzle sizes, or maybe I'll design one and print it. Also, I mean that's definitely um, an opportunity. Also, um, yeah, the the mystery of three um, D printed. Hamburgers will get solved. We will. We will do that. Um, if anybody, you know, has a, has a, has tried anything, and you know, I'd love to talk about it. Um, so, so definitely share your experiences. Hamburger is a little bit weird. I, I don't know about those chunks getting caught up in there. But uh, thank you so much, everybody, for uh, for checking out the barbecue and uh, for all the support and love. Um, you can. Check us out on botbq.org, B-O-T-B-Q.org. Go there and follow us if you want, uh, as well on social media, uh, Twitter, Facebook, G+, all that stuff. Uh, don't forget about to buy this book. Go to Amazon and buy it. Also, it's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. And uh, Florida's own blood. A lot of love because of it. As well as check out 3digitalcooks.com. Um, the interview I did with Lewis is uh, pretty fun. I had a lot of fun doing it, and uh, it's just uh, it's just real. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.